Hi, this is Ahmed from Integer Audio. Our channel is focused on audio and music production. Please subscribe if you are interested in this sort of content and don't forget to check our website for more in-depth reviews. In this video, we will have a look at a more complex and feature-rich denoiser from Sonix. It's called Sonix Oxford Denoiser. This is a part of Sonix Restore Suite, which is a collection of three plugins that are designed to clean the sound of digital audio recordings which may be damaged by pops, clicks, crackle, buzzes, hum, etc. The other two plugins of this suite are the Oxford D-Clicker and Oxford D-Buzzer. But in this video, we're only going to cover the denoiser. Let's have a quick overview of the plugin's interface and let's see the functionality. If this is your first time seeing this plugin and you are not familiar with it, you might want to stay for the next part where I highlight the functions and settings of it, so you know what is going on when I play the audio examples. But if you're familiar with it, you may skip ahead to the next chapter to see the plugin in works. Apart from the input and output, we have three main sections, the dehesser, detect, and removal. The dehesser is set to monitor the high harsh frequencies and hissing noise that may be coming from your preamp or microphone. You could introduce a frequency cutoff of your choice, which should be above the signal content. And there's the reduction slider that should be modulated according to taste. The dehesser is intended for certain purposes where there's not much high frequency preservation required, such as in dialogues. But in music or drum tracks for instance where there's lots of cymbals and hi-hats, we'd want to keep the character in clarity with high frequencies, so the dehesser may not be applicable in that instance. For the next section, we'd want to use this to detect the noise and profile it. This whole plugin algorithm is based on that, noise profiling. It profiles the noise based on the frequencies that are consistent through the whole track and then dictate the noise floor. To preserve the desired signal content, you should adjust the threshold below the valid signal components but well above the noise floor. You could do that manually or you could use the auto mode which would be efficient for the job. Another method to arrive at an appropriate noise profile is to use the freeze button. This is going to freeze the automatic noise profile and use that fixed profile from then on. This is useful for capturing the profile from a section of material containing only the background noise and then apply it to the rest of the material. However, I prefer using the auto mode on because it produces good results all around. But it would be perfect if you'd experiment with all of them and just find a perfect treatment for your audio track. There's also a smooth and two knobs which we will see in action when we have the example play and then there is a color knob which modulates the low frequencies and an air knob that modulates the high frequencies. Then there is the removal which will be the amount of reduction with high frequency cut and make up gain before you turn into the output. There is a mid side mode as well if you are into that. And at last there is the output that has a warmth knob which is good to add some of the warmth that may be lost during the denoising process. And there is the lesson section which enables you to solo the noise or the portion that is removed from the track. Now let's have some audio tracks to see how it will operate. Let's have a look at these two examples. We will try to clean up this vocal with hissing noise from the microphone. And then there is a clean extra guitar track with a consistent hum coming from the uh, amp. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. I'm going to loop this part where there's only noise playing. And this is going to help me to see the frequencies that I'm going to be dealing with. The spectrum analyzer here is telling me that there is high frequency noises, so I'm going to fiddle around with the dehesser to seamlessly remove that. It might not be perfect and it might adversely affect my vocal, so I'll have to go back and forth between the playback and processing until I get a good compromise. I am trying to set my threshold somewhere above the noise floor and below my valid signal content, so I preserve as much as possible of the shared frequencies between the noise and my voice.
We will listen to the whole thing now and let's see if we need any more processing. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. Test 1, 2, test 1. I'm adding some makeup gain. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. 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 I'll show you how good it is to do some fine tuning through the bands that are present on the display. This plugin might be complex and requires too much experience to get good results, but I think it's also fun to experiment with all the possibilities and learn from it. Now we'll see the bypassed and then we'll see the engaged. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. I cut off too much from the high frequencies. It made my voice sound dull. So I'll have to go back, especially to the dehesser, and maybe I'll just be gentle on that one. I might also let in more noise to preserve more of my vocal in here. And a little bit of noise might be okay if it's not too bad and not too distracting, of course depending on the context. Test 1, 2, test 1, 2, 3. 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 I like it without the dehesser now, so I'm just going to leave it at that and let's move on to the next example, which is going to be the clean electric guitar. I'm going to try the freeze mode now on this one. This is especially useful when the noise is not really changing and it keeps the same profile through the entire track. You should be able to easily profile it from a blank space in the recording. This is pretty much just the same process. I'm trying to set the threshold right above the noise floor and in a good level below the um, the valid signal content that I want, so I preserve as much as possible from that based on the noise profile that I got from the freeze mode, which is never changing through the entire track. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
from both tracks, there was still some noise playing and it wasn't completely quiet. Some other denoises would be able to achieve that completely quiet result. But that doesn't mean that this plugin is not worth checking out for yourself because every plugin has its certain purpose. I personally like how the bands on this one are flexible and you can adjust them more freely and there are numerous controls and panels to deal with the noise in different aspects. I personally think that video editors would especially benefit from this in the sense that if they have footage that is taken outdoors, it wouldn't be logical to have a dead silent voice over the footage. Maybe more realistic to have some noise in the background but that noise just doesn't distract the viewers. In conclusion, I think each one of these denoises should be used to serve a certain purpose and we have reviewed quite a lot of them on the channel so make sure to check them out. There are other denoisers that might be as easy in removing the noise as moving only one knob and others may be more complex and require individual skill. That will be it for this video, I hope you found it helpful. Leave a like and subscribe for more and thank you for watching.